Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Teen Gen Talks Podcast, where the goal is to empower the youth of Glendale, connect youth to community resources, individuals, and organizations. I'm your host, Melissa. And I'm Desiree, and we had the pleasure of talking to Ava Reed. Ava was born in Manhattan and raised right across the Hudson River in Hoboken, but currently lives in Palo Alto. She has a degree in political science from Barnard College, focusing on religion and SEO nationalism. We hope you enjoy this interview. Thank you, Ava, for taking the time out of day to talk with us. We have a lot to discuss. Yeah, of course. Thank you guys for having me. So to start off the interview, I want to ask about your love for books and writing and how did that love blossom? Honestly, I can't really remember a time that I didn't love books, um, but the books that kind of specifically made me want to be an author were the, and I think a lot of my fellow like zillennials have the same inspiration, which um, was the Warriors books by Aaron Hunter, which is like the ones about the cats and the clans. Oh my God, I love those books so much. So that was kind of my beginning of me like writing Warrior Cats fan fiction when I was like 10. So I also want to touch upon your time at Barnard College where you got your degree in political science. Um, what made you decide to pursue that avenue? Um, I mean, I was, I was very interested in politics at the time. Um, I thought it might be like a potential career path for me. And I do think that it's kind of helped out in my writing in certain ways, but um, <laughs> then I actually did like a political internship um, with my senator and then I was like, mm, I don't think this is for me. <laughs> it was a little bit just like, now you see the way the sausage is made and you never want to eat the sausage again. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> mm -hmm. And going back to writing and being a published author, how has that journey been for you? It's It was a long journey, which I think, again, is pretty common for anyone who's traditionally published. I mean, I queried on and off for years. So querying is kind of the first step of the process where you seek out an agent and then an agent is someone who submits your book to publishers. So first step is you need an agent. Um, and that is kind of a really difficult hurdle for people. And it did take me years to find an agent. Then I found an agent and then I had to leave that agent and find a new agent. Um, so it was, I started this, you know, querying when I was a teenager, that didn't really pan out. Um, I was really too young. And then I kind of learned more about the industry. And I found some people who were kind of mentors to me who were published authors. And then I queried more seriously. And I got an agent got a book deal. Um, but yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a very long process, everything in publishing, kind of iconically takes forever. So <laughs> So how did you decide the genre genre that you wanted to do when starting to write books? I mean, again, I've just always loved fantasy. Going back to my like warrior cat fan fiction days, I was also like, so <laughs> I was on Tumblr a lot as a teenager and I was kind of like a big name like blog in the Hunger Games fandom on Tumblr, um, <laughs> which I feel like says a lot about be and the topics that I've chosen to write about because my whole like thing was like defending the career tributes because I was like listen they're like child soldiers like they're <laughs> so that was like basically what my blog was dedicated to um which again like says a lot about me and the topics I choose to write and you know what is your pro writing process like when starting a new uh, project so a lot of my like fellow writer friends think that this is like kind of unhinged of me, but I love drafting. Like I love the first draft, like draft zero, just like starting with the white blank page because there's so many possibilities. And my writing process is basically just convince myself I'm a genius for six weeks and everything I'm writing is just the greatest thing ever put to paper. Um, <laughs> and that gives me the confidence to like draft really quickly. Um, and then the revising is when I'm like, oh my God, actually, like, I'm so dumb and all of this is terrible. A Study in Drowning is your upcoming YA debut. Can you tell us a little bit more about the book? Yeah, so A Study in Drowning is a YA dark academia romantic fantasy book. It follows the main character, Effie, who is a student at a prestigious architecture college, but she really wants to study literature, which she can't because of the college's, like, misogynistic rules. 
she ends up winning a competition to design the manor home of a famous author, the author that she really, really loves, the author whose book she finds kind of refuge in. So she goes, but what she finds is this very, like, disturbing, crumbling, gothic manor. And there she also meets her kind of academic rival. And it turns out he's there to prove that her favorite author was a fraud. And of course, initially she, you know, can't fathom this, this is horrible, but kind of slowly over the course of the book, she learns more secrets about his past. She becomes kind of disillusioned. So she works with her academic rival to solve this mystery and this decades old conspiracy. But while they're there at this manner, kind of strange supernatural occurrences start taking place. And there are kind of these dark forces that are conspiring against them. And prior to your YA novel, you have written the critically acclaimed adult fantasies, The Wolf and The Woodsman and Juniper and Thorn. How has that transition going from adult to teen been like for you? And I guess what made you want to do more of a YA novel? Yeah, so I definitely think I'm just naturally more inclined to write um, adult novels. So it definitely was kind of... <laughs> quashing some of my instincts to <laughs> write for teens. Um, but it was a, it was an interesting challenge because, you know, I'm an adult now. So, you know, it took kind of going back and remembering my teenage years to try and write something that felt like a true reflection of that, you know, period in my life and something that, you know, I thought or I hoped that teenagers could relate to. And that's, you know, that kind of going back isn't really a process that's necessary with adult novels. So that was interesting and challenging in its own way. Um, and I've just always been kind of an omnivore when it comes to reading and it comes to writing. And I want to write in a lot of different genres and age categories, ideally. So we have some questions that have been submitted through a local Glendale teen. The first question is, how do you balance writing and your personal life? Um, <laughs> badly, I don't know. I'm a very like all or nothing type of person. So I can definitely sink into a project and kind of get a bit obsessive over it. But it helps that a lot of my like real life friends are also authors. So we can kind of, we all like understand and relate to that experience and compulsion. And we, you know, can vent about similar things and my partner is also a PhD candidate so he <laughs> has his own kind of like obsessive phases and like you know we work even though he's you know obviously writing nonfiction, um, and I'm writing fiction we're both just like writing books <laughs> right now because he's writing his dissertation so I think it helps to just you know surround yourself with people you have something in common with um or alternately, you know, a lot of authors are very much like, I want my personal life and my author life to be very, very separate. I don't want to be friends with anyone who's, you know, in that kind of field, which I think is also a completely valid way to see things. And um, if you have writer's block, how do you overcome it and what inspires you? I think just reading always inspires me, reading something that is out of my comfort zone or a book that I wouldn't necessarily usually pick up because and this is kind of the advice that I give everyone who wants to start writing which is just to read as much as you can and read stuff that mm -hmm. is out of your comfort zone that you wouldn't necessarily be drawn to um because you can learn something from everything you read even if it's just like wow I really hated that I never want to write anything like that um or like this was really cool but like I wish this had been executed in a different way I'm gonna write like a book that fixes that like I think that that's <laughs> like the inclination that like actually gets a lot of people started writing um so yeah just reading I also listen to a lot of music to inspire me um I have very like detailed thorough Spotify playlists for all of my books so how do you bring your poli sci degree into your writing or has poli sci in it in any way prepared you for your author adventure so what I studied specifically for my poli sci degree was like um kind of ethnic nationalism and national identity um and religion and things like that and i think that that is very apparent in all of the books that i write it, those are major themes um specifically around kind of national mythology and storytelling and how stories can contribute to nation building and national identity so 
it has been very helpful in that way, you know, for the wolf and the woodsman that was specifically inspired by a paper that I was actually writing about Hungarian politics. And then I was like, it was so interesting, like the current political climate that I kind of was like, I started to look back and think like, how was this climate created? What was, you know, what gave rise, you know, a thousand years ago to this particular, you know, political situation. And um, so, yeah, I think that it, has been really influential on my writing. To you, what does all of this mean, especially being able to share your voice through your book? I mean, it's an incredible experience. And I think that I've felt that even more so with a study in drowning because it's, you know, geared toward teenagers. And I can remember so clearly being a teenager who loved books. And it's, it is really special and magical to, you know, hear in particular, you know, I saw myself in your book, you know, I saw myself in your main character. Um, I, that's always really special. And I think for me, art kind of exists to evoke strong emotions in people. Like that's the purpose of art. It's, you know, catharsis, um, it's understanding. It's, there's this um, Murakami quote that I always come back to, or I don't know if it's Murakami, but anyway, it's this quote I always come back to that's like, <laughs> basically oh it's Ishiguro Kazuo Ishiguro um and he says you know writing a book is just saying it feels this way to me does it also feel this way to you um and I think that's what I try to kind of achieve with everything I write so um before we end we have some rapid fire questions the first question is what is your favorite color blue when are you the happiest I don't know, playing with my rabbit makes me very happy. I have a pet rabbit. Knowing what you know now, what advice would you give your 18-year-old self? Oh my gosh, be patient, slow down. <laughs> if you could have three people dead or alive for dinner guests, who would they be? Oh my gosh. Um, Mary Shelley, Shakespeare. I know, very cliche answer. Um, <laughs> and, oh gosh. I don't even know. Shirley Jackson. What is a song that you have on repeat currently? I mean, I'm obsessed with everything Hosier does forever. So I've been playing DeSelby too on repeat. What do you want your legacy to be? Um, I think, like I said before, I want to just be seen as an author who is able to provoke really, really strong emotions, whether even if they're negative emotions, you know, an author whose work is, is challenging, I guess. What is a book that you are currently reading or a book that you would recommend? So I'm currently reading A Fragile Enchantment by Alison Saft, which is out in January, and I'm loving it so, so, so much. It's kind of a Bridgerton-style romantic fantasy of manners. Um, Alison can do no wrong in my eyes, and it's just this amazing, like, immersive romantic story. So I would recommend that. Pre-order it. It's out in January. Thank you so much, Ava. We learned a lot about you. Thank you for taking your time out of your day to sit down with of us course. and talk. Um, can you let everyone at home know about any upcoming projects and where they can connect with you? Yes. So my next book is my next adult fantasy, which is called Lady Macbeth. And it's kind of what it says on the tin. It's a reimagining of Shakespeare's play from the perspective of the female lead. It's an adult historical fantasy that we're pitching as Circe meets Wolf Hall. And that will be out in almost exactly a year next August. Oh, awesome. Well, thank you again so much. It was a pleasure getting to know you. Of course. You too. Did you enjoy this episode? I'm sure you did. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at LAC. Also, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the YouTube channel Glendale Library Arts and Culture. And follow us on any of the podcast platforms wherever you listen to us to um, at Teen and Todd. Thank you. Bye.